Oh, but those guys are Wow, it is silent in here. Silent as a grave, which is interesting because I'm looking at a baptism tank. That's something that we need to understand here. The baptism is a grave. You're going down into a watery grave, coming up a brand new person resurrected yeah, in Christ yeah. Jesus' name. All right. How is everybody today? Amen. Hopefully yeah. everybody is good. Despite trials, despite hardships and things that come against us, um, God is still good. Amen. God is still on the throne. Amen. God still loves you. Amen. So, there yeah, was All right, so why don't we... We're going to turn to probably the most... The, 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 this, this book, not a lot of people know. It's one of those books that, are, that get missed a lot. And it's a scripture that, that just, you know... Uh, not a lot in the Bible, actually, not there it is, uh, that we can read it, but you know, I study this stuff out, so I'm going to actually just go off memory here, you know, just, just saying. All right, everybody, everybody read with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whoever believes upon him shall not perish, not perish but praise God. Now let's say that with vigor. Let's say that with some, some fire here. Because man, I was like feeling like we're dragging it out of you guys. Say that one more time. So God so loved the world. There we go. That he, he and shall have a lasting life. Right. Amen. In Jesus' name. Do we have any believers in Jesus in the house today? Amen. 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 Go ahead, one more time. Let's lift up the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Lift up your hands with me. In Jesus' name, Lord God, we praise you. We come and we surrender to your word. We surrender to your heart, Lord God. And we want to be saved. So we come, Lord God, seeking your face and asking you, Lord God, to work through this place. In Jesus' name. So yesterday, I'm going through and I'm looking at, I'm actually, me and Mayor were here filling up the tank and everything. And, and there, was a, there was a gentleman outside and, and he was... I'm trying to be politically correct, but he was clearly, he was, he was homeless and he was hurting and he was laying there and he was in a lot of pain and I could see him and I, and I, and I, and I saw his face welted up and I started asking him, hey, are you okay or what, what's going on with you? And he was telling me how he had his bike stolen, how, his, his, how he got beat up and all this and, and I was like, do you want to see your doctor? And he said, no, no, I, he went to the hospital already and, and they, they told him to leave and the only thing I could do was give this man a cup of coffee, let him come and sit down for a while while we're filling this up and cool off at least. And he, he sat in here and he slept and he didn't do a whole lot of anything. But the, I don't say this to get kudos for us. What that is, is that's, that's just, look, we're trying to be the face of God in this world. And if anything, if all I can do is give a man a cup of coffee because he doesn't want anything else, then, then praise God. At least we're trying to do what God wants us to do. Right. See, God so loved the world that he came despite where you are, despite what you look like, despite your past, despite the things you're going through, despite what your parents did, despite that you might be living on the street, full of drugs, whatever else, God came anyway. See, he loved us so much. Now, now this is where it gets kind of interesting to me because when I, when I, when I read this, I, I think of, I think of those people who go to those concerts, and, and, and I, for lack of a better word, I would say that they're more like groupies. You know, I think, think of those, those, those and, and, and unfortunately, ladies, most groupies are ladies, you know, but I guess there could be guy groupies, but, you know, they, they look at a particular artist, and they're like, I just know that one day this artist is going to fall in love with me. I just know one day he's going to look down from the stage. He's going to be like, you, you need to come up here with me. I'm in love with you. I just know. And this, this, these groupies, they go following this artist all around the world, seeking to, to, to just see this person. And they're just, they're just hoping in their heart, I just know that Bruce Springsteen is going to look at me and I'm, he's going to be like, yeah, you come up on stage with me like he did the Corkin Cox and uh, that song back in the 80s. I can't remember what it is now, but, but I just know. Now, see, I, I look at that and reality sets in. Most likely that ain't ever going to happen for that person that's a groupie. You know, most likely that ain't ever, that person does not know us. That, 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 that famous person that's singing really 
doesn't really care too much about the people in the crowd other than he's getting a, he's getting money and he's and he's performing and all that but he will never know that person and it's kind of sad but you know because it's going to break that groupie's heart that that person will never know him but you know here's the cool thing about god is despite despite our failures he knows us yeah. he loves us He's looking at you and saying, I call you. Now, unfortunately, for most of the time, for most humanity, we're the ones that don't give him the time of day. We're the ones that most of the time turn away from him and walk. And, and, and even though he's going, I love you. I see your failures. I have come. And don't you understand? I'm actually the rock star here. And I'm calling you out. And I'm calling and saying, I love you. I'm the one who watches you in the middle of the night when you're sleeping. That's kind of creepy, but it's the truth. I'm the one who puts the air in your lungs. I'm the one who loves you. I adore you. And yet, most of the time, we turn from him. So, but for those who choose the Lord, let me actually turn. For those of us who turn and choose and, and decide, Lord Jesus, we want to be where you are. And he came to save us. Yeah, thank you, Lord. That he came to give himself for us. So I'm going to read that one more time. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whoever believes on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Then go verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So anyone who calls upon the Lord. But now we need to get a little bit of basis here because here's the thing. We can look at John 3, 16 and say, okay, I believe on God and I'm saved, so I'm going to go live my own life and do whatever. But I believe on Jesus. So everybody, you want to back that up? Go to verse, where you at? Verse 3. Let's get a little basis, a little background, a little understanding of what's going on here. And I'm just going to kind of skim through. I'll stop on part of this. Okay, verse 1, there was a man, a Pharisee, by the name of Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher. Come from God, for no one can do these signs unless God be with him. Okay, stopping there. So you got a guy, he's a religious ruler. He comes up to Jesus. He says, hey, yo, I see you doing these signs, these miracles and all this stuff, and you must be a great man. Therefore, I want to know more about you. But understand, he comes to him by night. Back then, they didn't have street lights, so he was doing it sneakily. He didn't want his friends and his homies and his, his family to see him doing it. So he's coming to Jesus, sneaking, and saying, hey, I want to know more about you. What's, 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 what's going on? How many of you have gone to church and you didn't tell your friends or anything like that? Your family didn't know or anything like that? I know when I first got saved, that's how it was. When I first got saved, I didn't tell my homies. I was like, you know what? I'm going to church. And this was me coming to Jesus that night saying, God, I feel something. I know. I, I just, I need something from you. But this is what is cool about Jesus because then he looks at him. He stops right there. He's like, yeah, I'm all this. I do all that. But Jesus stops him and says, most surely I say to you, unless you are born again, he cannot enter second or uh, into the kingdom of God. <coughs> okay, so Nick, so basically Nick Demas is kind of pumping him up. Yo, you're doing all this stuff. I'm, I'm real happy. And he's like, stop. You must be born again. So Nick Demas now is looking at him, going, Rabbi, what do you mean here? How can I be born a, a second time into my mama's womb? Can I? I'm a I'm a six foot something man. I got hair where I don't want it. And I'm losing it where I do want it. I, I what do you mean? I got to be born again. How does this work? And he's saying, you must be born again. And so Jesus goes on, verse 5, Most surely I say to you, unless you are born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter a second time, or he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say this to you. You must be born again. Seems pretty basic to me. He's saying, look, you must be born of the water and of the Spirit. Can everybody see this? Amen. Because I just want you all to know that, that this isn't Pastor Matt making it up. This isn't this me. This is the word of God. This is Jesus saying, you must be born again. You must be born of the water and of the spirit. Two things, two keys, two things that what he's saying is if you don't have it, you're not going to make it. We love John 3.16 and trust me, I do. Whoever believes on the Lord will be saved. But we can't. I can't just wipe this part away and only go right here. 
We have to take the Bible as a whole. That's why we baptize. That's why we dump people into a watery grave. That's why we put them down. We're being obedient to the word of God. Amen. We're being obedient to what God said. Without this, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, I don't, I don't know about you, <laughs> but I don't want to get to God and, and, and in that day of judgment and have him look at me and say, Yo, I'm glad that you believed on me, but you didn't have your sins washed. Now, I, that would just really scare me. I'd rather do too much than not enough. Right? Everybody with me? Yeah. All right. Silent as grave in here. We, we, we need to start waking up some bones in Jesus' name. Yeah. Right? I don't want to get to God and have him say, I'm glad that you believed in me, but there's more. And you had a whole opportunity in your life, in my case, 42 years, that I could have kept on doing a lot more. And I hope Lord willing, I'll live another 42, 50 years, whatever he, however long he calls. And, and in that time, I, I'm just living for God. And he's looking at you and he's saying, but I gave you an entire life for an entire, entire 100 years or however long you're alive. I'd hate to go to him and say, but you didn't do the most important thing. You didn't. Get buried in my name. Yeah. You didn't get filled with my spirit. How sad. Lord, help us. Listen, we got a generation of people who, we, they barely know the name of Jesus. And God has simply given us, I mean, he, he's made it very plain. Believe. Get baptized and filled with my spirit. That's your key to salvation. You want to you want to make it. You want to know you're going. Because let me tell you something. Now this is for the church too, guys. Because how does that affect church? You could say, "Well, I've already been baptized." In Jesus' name, perfect. But the Bible also talks about being uh, renewed in spirit daily, walking in faith daily. As a matter of fact, the Book of Romans says that uh, uh, that just as easily as we were put into the, the old tree, that we were wild olives put in, grafted in, that we could be plucked right back out. A lot of people don't want to hear that part because, yeah, you can lose your salvation if you're not doing the right thing. As a matter of fact, the book of Ezekiel says if a righteous man can, stops doing righteousness, then all the righteousness that he did is forgotten. Everything. So what's the point? Where are you going with this, Pastor Matt? Do the right thing. This word is for the church, too. Why? Because we are all called to go throughout and preach the gospel. So you might have already been baptized, but guess what? There's people out there that are not. There's people in your family. There's people in your kids. There's people that are not living for God. And you're looking at them going, you need this word just as much as I do. It's for us to walk in. Everybody turn with me, Acts 2.38. Let me see if my sound guy can go as fast as I am. Acts 2 and 38. So, this is after the death of Jesus. This is after death, burial, and resurrection. He's already alive. He's already, the Holy Spirit is uh, uh, just been poured out onto the world. Jesus tells his guys, go to Jerusalem, tarry there, wait there for, uh, uh, until the promise comes, so the day of Pentecost fully comes. And, and the Holy Spirit falls out, and they start speaking in tongues, and everything's going on. And then the people in Jerusalem, because they're there for a celebration, and they're hearing this, and they're like, what's going on? These people are drunk. And he's like, wait a second now. This is Peter. He stands up. And he's bold when he stands up. And, and then he starts saying, we're not drunk like you're saying, because you know it's 9 in the morning. It's not, you know, I mean, I guess there's plenty of people out there that drink at 9 in the morning, but we're not one of them. We're not drunk. But instead, this man Jesus, in whom you crucified, is now fulfilling his word and pouring out his Holy Spirit upon us. And what you're hearing with your ear, with everybody speaking in tongues around me, is what's going on. Now, that's the first part of chapter 2. We're going to get to chapter uh, 238, like I said, because what has happened here is once the, the people that were hearing him, they were convicted in their hearts. And they said, hey, what, what shall we do to be saved? Now, when they heard these things, this, verse, uh, this is uh, 37. Now, when they heard these things, they were cut in the heart, and they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Today's vernacular, men and brethren, how can I be saved? Yo, I'm scared. I just realized I'm, I'm, I'm responsible for Jesus going on, Christ, on the cross. I'm responsible for him sinning I, or, 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 or taking my sin on. I'm responsible. I'm a, I put him up there. Now, I'm shaking my boots because... 
eventually I am going to pass. What's going to happen to me? What can I do to be saved? Because if I just put God on the cross, how can I be saved? And what was his answer? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Stopping there. You get baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sin. That word remission means for a washing. What's he saying? Without baptism, your sin can't be washed. We must get buried in the name of Jesus. We must have the sin washed away. He's saying, you want to go to heaven? This is the key. Because then he went on to say, after you get baptized, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now I have this mental picture in my head. As he's saying that, he's pointing to the guys that are behind him. Everybody, a lot of there's a big church out there, I'm not going to point any names, who would like to make her co redemptress or, or put her right in the same spot as Jesus. Because uh -huh. she had to get filled with the Holy Ghost. She had to get filled with the Holy Spirit. So she can't save anybody. She was blessed among women because she got to carry God in flesh in her body. That was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. But she cannot save anybody. As a matter of fact, she was back there receiving the Holy Spirit just like the apostles were. Mm -hmm. yeah. You want to get saved? If you want to walk in Christ, then we got to fulfill his word to the fullest. And I don't know exactly what I'm talking to. Maybe it's just people off of social media that I'm talking to that I'm preaching to today. But... And maybe for some of us, this is review. But I'm telling you right now, this is a check to the church and to anybody that's hearing me. If you haven't been baptized, today is the day of salvation. If you haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost, today is the day of salvation. Because my Bible says, unless you have those, you're not going to make it. Amen. Right. Amen. We need to get that in our heads. And like I said, maybe it's just not for me. Or maybe, maybe you're like, okay, I've already had both of these. Then are you walking in it? Are you walking in the baptism that God gave you? Are you walking in a submitted life? Are you walking in, 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 in the life that says, I am dead to sin? Are you walking in that? Are you walking in the Holy Spirit and, and saying that I'm going to be renewed in this Holy Spirit daily because without it, I'm going to die and I can't live without Him. He gives me my strength. He gives me my power. Yeah. He gives me all that I need and all that I ever will want. Yeah. But are you walking in it? That's the question. That's why this message is still for the church. It's not just for the sinner. It's not for the person that's never heard of the word of God. It's for the church today. Are you walking in the calling that God's called you to? Are you walking in that power that he's given you? Are you willing to take it daily because God has so much more for you? Yeah. But unless you grab that, you, you will not be able to make it. You understand? Right. It's a daily walk. It's a daily grabbing yeah. hold of God and your power and saying, Lord, I need you this second. I need you right now. Yeah. My life is falling apart. Things are happening that I don't understand. My family, my job, my health, whatever's going on. And God's saying, I got you. I am your power, but you've got to turn to me because I am not going to just, just let you go. You gotta turn to me. Just like my son would come to me and say, Dad, I need help. God's saying the same thing to you. Turn to me. Know me. I don't care if it's at night, like Nicodemus. Turn to me, and I will give you everything you want and or need. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's why. Amen. That's why we baptize. That's why we get filled Amen. with the Holy Ghost. You want power in your life, you want to do great things in your life, get baptized. Get renewed today. Why would you leave here not? You want something else? If you've never spoken in tongues, today is the day of salvation. Right now is your time. Today, oh man. Mm. Yeah. I need to take some more time to get teaching on this. But, because a lot of people are going to fight me, even on social media. Speaking in tongues is for every single living person on the face of the earth. Yeah. And I can already hear people going, oh no. Bible teaches, oh some, some don't say, oh, do all speak in tongues? Wait a second, then you need to understand your Bible. Yeah. For the book of Corinthians, is talking about spiritual gifts, not salvation. He's talking to the church. All right, I know I'm going to get some backlash on this. That's okay. Right. I'm teaching truth. You need to catch up and read your Bible. Because bottom line, everybody has the ability to speak in tongues. As a yeah. matter of fact, he's saying. Okay, turn with me. Let's get some more just because I'm going to I'm getting some looks. So everybody turn with me. Acts chapter 10. And I know I've taught this to our church, but uh, this might be re review for some of us, but that's okay.
Acts chapter 10, verse 44. What's going on here is that uh, Peter shows up to this guy, his name is Cornelius. Cornelius was a ruler of the Romans. He was a Gentile. A Gentile is a non-Jewish believer. And he goes up, or a non-Jewish person. And, and he goes into the Roman's house, to, to Cornelius' house, and, he's, and he starts preaching Jesus to him. And it says it just like this. And while Peter was speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all that had heard the word. And those of the circumcision, meaning the Jewish people, the circumcision, the, the existing church at the time, who believed were astonished as many it came, as came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out onto the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Wait a second now. What, what's going on here? They, the Holy Spirit fell. They start speaking. Yeah. All right. I'm not going to ask anybody to raise their hands today, but I'm telling you right now, if you want this, you can have it today. And why would you walk out of here without it? God is pouring out into this house. Even right now, I feel yeah. it all over me right now. He's here. If you want this, it's yours. Now, here, listen. The devil has spent 2,000 years making speaking in tongues. That's a weird thing. But God says it's as natural as a man talking if you get filled with his spirit. Let me back this up. How many of you know that God told Abraham that you must be circumcised? That, for guys, that's a really weird thing. Why would I want to do that as a grown man? But God is all over coveted. He wants to make a covenant, a special covenant with people. And sometimes he uses something that just seems really weird. Circumcision being one of them. Thank God we don't have that same thing. Now Abraham, when he was called by God, he was old. And yet he had to get circumcised as an old man. That must have been horrible. Okay? At least for us as babies, we have it done. And if, if, you, if you are, and if you're not, praise God, that's okay too. Because we're in a New Testament, New Covenant, praise God. But here's the deal. Imagine being old and having that done. Well, God is all over doing some funny stuff to make a covenant with people. Okay, now, physically, women can't have circumcision. Praise God. You're women. We're men. That's okay. Okay, I'm trying to keep this as G-rated as I can, but everybody understands plumbing. Do you know what I mean? So, you guys, you know, okay, we're good. But what he can do is give us all the Holy Spirit. This is the new covenant that we have. This is the thing that will make a covenant with us in God. This is what shows the world that we are filled with his spirit and that we're set apart. We're not like everybody else. Yeah. This is where he says, I'm pouring myself, God of the universe, into you. Into the specific person that I made. I created you to house the Holy Spirit. Don't you understand? We are temples of the living God. And I want, and God's looking at you saying, and now I want to fill you with me. And there's going to be a reaction. It's kind of like, if you take, how many of you made those volcanoes when you were a kid? And you took, take baking powder and you put vinegar on it, and what happens? It kind of bubbles up and, and, and stuff. And then you have that red dye and it looks like it's lava. And you're like, yeah. And I used to do that on ant hills when I was growing up, just to see what happened to the ants. Because okay, it's kind of brutal and maybe morbid and I need to go repent but you know that's, that's, that's the truth of it right so God's looking at you and he's saying I have a body and I want to pour myself in and I want to see what fizzles up and comes out of you and blows up out of you and see what you do I want to fill you with me now if you're looking for that place of peace come get the peace because God of peace will pour into you today if you want joy it's right here you want self, you want that, that 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 comfort of knowing that should I get hit by a bus today, I'm going to heaven? It's right here. God has it all for you. Everybody turn with me, Acts 19. And this is this is one that I love the scripture. This one was what sealed the deal for me. Mm, Jesus, man. Everybody here? Everybody awake with me? Yeah. Yeah. That's boring. No. Touch your neighbor next to you and say, wake up. Wake up. Everybody with? <laughs> if you don't have a neighbor, then you know, smack yourself on the head or something. <laughs> so wake up. Everybody with me? Amen. All right. Acts 19, here's the deal. This is Paul. Oh, 19 Acts, chapter 19. Chapter, verse 1. Okay, this is Paul. He's going out. 
Actually, you know what? We're just going to read it once I say it. Okay, and it happened while Apollos was in Corinth. And that Paul, having passed through the upper region, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive this Holy Spirit when you believed? Oh, wait a second now. Stop right there. It says that they were believers, that they were disciples. What are disciples? Followers of Christ. So he came across these guys that were followers of Christ. And he asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit? Well, if I believe in Christ, isn't that enough? Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there was a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, into what were you baptized? And they said, into John's baptism, referring to John the Baptist. Now this was John lived before, well, while Jesus walked the earth. So there was, there was still under the Old Testament law. So John was simply baptizing people as a, a sign, an outward sign of an inward feeling, saying, I'm making, a, I'm making today, I'm walking with God. But that's all it was. It was nothing more. There was no remission of sin or anything like that. You, it was just looking at the world and saying, I am now making a choice for God. So he turns around and he says, says, into John's baptism. And then Paul says unto them, indeed, indeed, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized, wow, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and what did they do? They spoke with tongues. Interesting. Interesting. These were already believers. They were already disciples of Christ. They already believed. They already accepted him in their heart, if you will. But he's saying, but... Did you receive the Holy Spirit? Have you been baptized? It's good that you received him. It's good that you got him in your heart. It's good that you made the, the sinner's prayer and, and you confessed and you said, Lord, come into my heart. This is a good thing and I love that. But yet, did you receive the power that was promised to you? Did you receive the washing of your sins? Here's my question to every person in the sound of my voice, whether in this room or on social media. Did you receive Christ, the Holy Spirit, the baptism Today, can you look at your life right now and say, I've done it all and I'm okay. We're good to go. Because if you haven't, today is the day of salvation. Amen. Right now is that time. Right now is that time. Amen. Why would you allow another day to go by without it? Why would you go back out there saying, I'm going to go live my own way? Because I've said this a thousand times. What's a theme song to hell? I did it my way. Mm -hmm. That is with an anthem, the theme song, whatever you want to call it, that's what it is. Why would we do it our way when God's saying it's so simple? You get filled with my peace, for I want to give it to you. Get baptized, because I want to give this to you. I died for all to live, yes. for all people to come to me. I've died for you. Amen. And it doesn't matter what you did yesterday. It doesn't matter what you did five minutes ago. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yeah. And I say that humbly because I know what, what goes on in here and this guy. You know, it's something I fight. And praise God, we have a God of mercy that will come and say, yeah, fall before me because I want to wash you again. And I want to love on you again. And I want to just hug on you again. There's times when we feel like we're not worthy of this. And guess what? None of us are. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. You're not. Not one person is. But God says, I so love the world that I came and died for you. Hmm. Always stand to our feet. Hey, everybody. This is an invite to you to come worship with us at Eden Church. My name is Pastor Matt. This is Pastor Mary. Hi. Please come down check us out. It's uh, 152 South State Street in Hemet, California. As well as you can see us on social media at Loving People God's Way. Come worship with us.